Hi, this is Mr. Max. So I am doing coordinate geometry and this one here is the first out of five. All right. So remember that uh, this is actually the connection between algebra and geometry. And, and when we're doing coordinate geometry, we are looking at things like distances and, uh, and also um, the, the lines. And we can also see how one can represent this by means of equations and expressions. Okay, and so we're going to use formula and also algebraic methods. And I will say that later on when we get to the shapes that you do need to also um, revise the work on the different properties that you find. Say, for example, a parallelogram. What can you tell me about the size of parallelogram and so on. All right, but I'm today looking at the length of a line segment, part of a line. So let us bring in a diagram here. So we're going to look at two points here. All right, point A is the point X sub 1, Y sub 1. So it's somewhere here. Point B is the point X sub 2, Y sub 2. And point C is the point X sub 2, Y sub 1. So if you bring in the distance here. So what we are seeing, we are looking for the length of this line. We measure this line, but you cannot take a ruler and measure it from there to there. So we have to work with that right angle triangle right there. Now, when we are covering trigonometry, and we did this also in the lower grades, in order for you to find the longest side of a right angle triangle, in this particular case, the hypotenuse or AB, we do realize that Pythagoras plays a role. So you need to find the exchange in X. That is the distance here. You take whatever this X sub 2 is minus that. That gives you the distance here, the horizontal distance. And then you do the same, finding the vertical distance, all right? Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. So once you know this vertical distance and the horizontal distance, and you apply the theory of Pythagoras, and if you can remember the theory of Pythagoras, you have to add the squares of the sums of the, you have to add the two shorter sides, the square of that. So whatever this difference is, you add with this difference, the square of that plus the square of this should equal to the square of the right, of the hypotenuse. Now, one of the things also, while just looking at this particular instance, if the square of the longer side is equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter legs, then the triangle is a right angle triangle, okay? So sometimes you will be asked to prove that, and then when you prove that, you have to take the square of the side plus the square of the other short side, and you get that answer, and then you take the square of the longer side, and if the two are equal, then you have proven that whatever that angle is, in this case angle C, is definitely 90 degrees. All right, so just to quickly bring in what we know from the formula. So you have got to x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right, so you can also write it another way. You can actually state x sub 1 minus x sub 2 plus y sub 1 minus y sub 2. Because the thing is, when you are taking the square root, so suppose I give you um, x to be 3 here, and I give you another point y. Let's say for some good measure it is. So this is a, a point here. Okay, and uh, let's bring in another point, um, x, comma, y, and let's say this is 5, okay, even for that good measure, negative 5, and let's suppose that is 1. And if you take this to be my first x, so I can have 3 minus negative 5, okay? So I need to square that, all right? And then, obviously, I'll do that for the x. And if you do this for the y, because I started with, neg with 3, I must start with negative 2 minus 1. And I square that. So first, you work on the inside. You get 8 square. Then you get here negative 3. And this is what you need to be a bit careful of, right? Square. Well, if you go ahead, you get 64. And here's the thing. You are going to get a positive number, okay? Whenever you square, whatever the negative number is, you square it, you get a positive number. Now, what if someone was to take the points around and the person started with negative 5 minus 3, taking the two values of x, and then you square that, plus 1 minus 
negative 2. Okay? Then you square that. Well, here we are going to get negative 8, all square. And here you are going to get positive 3, all square. And negative 8 is nothing but 64 plus 9. So you see, it's identical no matter how you are writing your points. So it depends. I can start with x sub 2, then I have to take y sub 2, or I start with x sub 1, y sub 1. But I cannot do this. I cannot mix them, you know. Mixing them does not make sense. You cannot take uh, x sub 2 minus y x sub 1, and here you are now changing. Because you started with x sub 2, you must start with y sub 2. Okay, that point of y, all right? Otherwise, your whole, you know, uh, length of the line is going to be wrong, okay? And make sure you don't make that mistake. So bottom line is, sometimes it's even not needed for you to write this negative stuff inside the square brackets, but do it as well. And also, for the sake of your calculator, I don't know, don't know what type of calculator you are using, I will also advise you to use... Um, brackets more than often. For example, this particular formula, I can insert brackets here and a bracket there. All right. If it is you're using some calculators are not as, you know, they don't have that logic and you need to make sure that at least you, especially these olden types, you have to tell that calculator, so to say, that you must find the sum of the squares here, the differences between the points and the sum of the squares before you take the square root. Okay, so in general, that is the formula that you have. All right, so let's look at a few points here. So we have to calculate the distances between the following point, right? Give your answer correct to three significant figure. Well, you have got negative two, four here, five, negative three. You have a loop, you will see I arrive at my answer, which is 9.90, all right? And they also want us to give the answer correct to three significant figures. Bring out of another point, 4,7, negative 5,9. You substitute, I started with negative 5, so I must take 4, and then I have to take 9, minus 7, and I get the square root of 85. Oh, to 9.22, correct to three significant figures. When you do the following one, so I suggest you pause the video and you try them by yourselves, and then you look and see whether your answers are definitely also the same as mine. Okay, so that is how you do these particular questions. Right, so we have another question here. They are saying three points are A is negative 7, negative 4, B is negative 4, negative 2, and C is 2, 2. So we are supposed to find AB. So I calculated AB. Then I leave my answer in third form. It's 13 units, square root of 13. Okay, uh, I'm leaving it in this form. Uh, if this was centimeter, that's what the answer would have been. You see, I've started with negative 4 here for x. I started a b value, so I must also then take the corresponding a value there. All right? And I started with negative 4, so now I must start for my y values with negative 2 and the other one. All right. Then the next one they want us to find is b, c. All right? So I write my two points down. I calculate the value of b doing the same. I started with this x value, negative 4 minus 2. Then I must take away negative 2 minus 2 again. I get the square root of 52. Then AC, I get 117, the square root of 117. It started with the value of A, the X value of A, so I must also then take the Y value of A. Okay, so negative 7 minus 2, and then negative 4 minus 2. Right, so that is how you find the length of those line segments there. Now they are saying we're supposed to show that all these points are on a straight line. Now, the way we do that is we are going to take the sum because it comes from Pythagoras, okay? If you are having a right angle triangle, and perhaps I need to come in here, all right? So you have a right angle triangle here, and let's say that's 5 here, and that's 3 here, and that's 4 here, and we are saying this is a right angle triangle. Now, what Pythagoras is saying is saying that 5 square is equal to 3 square plus 5. 4 square. Now, when you look here, you get 9 plus 16, and this here is 25. So essentially, what we are doing is when we are doing this particular part that I have here, all right, I am now taking the sum of these, the 9 plus 16. So I'm saying 9 plus 16, all right, and if I subtract the 25, 
do I get zero? And here is 9 plus 16 is 25, and I get zero as an answer. All right? So what I know is now I have got um, a right angle triangle. Okay? So something is going to tell me also if all of these points are, if they equal to zero when I do this, I'm dealing with a right angle triangle. And what I also know is that these points must be collinear. They must be on the same line. All right? Because if you have a look at, let me just bring this out here so I can provide more space to show the next work. Okay? So if you take A plus B plus AC, just the distances. So if you just take the distances and you add the distances and you take um, A plus B plus B plus C, it should equal to AC. And that means they are all on a straight line. So when you have this condition, you get zero when you do this then you must know you are dealing with a right angle triangle or you have got points that are on a straight line, okay? That is how we prove for points in a straight line or also how we prove whether you are dealing with a right angle triangle, right? So it's very important here. We didn't have to prove that it's a right angle triangle. We had to prove that A and B and C lie on a straight line. So once you use the same methodology that you use to prove right angle triangles, then and you also then use that application for you to say that, well, these points will therefore be on a straight line. So I've done it here a little bit with a graph for you to see. Point A is negative 7,4. Point A, not AB, okay? Point A. And point B is negative 4,2. And point C is negative, it's 2,2. And as you can see, if you take A to C, and you should equal to AB plus BC, all right? So this is a, 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 a graphical, a picture representation of the points here. And then, therefore, they are on a straight line. Right, so here is a little bit of a note that you need to uh, have in mind, all right? You have got um, AB plus BC. If you do that and uh, you get the answer is bigger than AC, like longer than the right angle triangle, so you're going to have, uh, it forms a triangle. When you take AB plus BC and then they equal to each other, what we have seen in our previous example, the points are all collinear. That means they are in a straight line. But if... You add side AB plus side BC, all right, or those two points, and then you see that your answer is less than what you have there. They are not, it's, not a, it's not possible. It's not a triangle. It's just going to be some random points like that. Right, so here we have got a triangle as the following vertices. So we are supposed to find uh, X to Y, Y to Z, and X to Z, the lengths of that, okay? So when I did X to Y, all right, taking X to 3,2, and then Y is the negative 3,0. You punch them in. Remember the formula. I get this particular answer. I also gave my answer more or less correct to three significant figures. I did the same for Y to Z, all right? Substituting the X values for Y and the Y values for, for Z, finding the exchange in them. Do the same for X to Z, all right? So by looking at this, I can see obviously y to z is the longer distance, okay? So when I have to prove something in the next part, I will definitely only work with x, y, and x, z, and then I'll see if I square the stuff, what will I get the same side? All right, so here's it when they are saying we're supposed to show. So when you take x, y square plus so x, z square, I get 50. When I take y, z square, I get 50 as well. So because that is the condition, this triangle or x angle y, x, z is a right angle triangle, okay? Because angle x, y, z is equal to 90 degrees. And here's a diagram again that I just brought in for you to have a look so you can see that angle right there is 90 degrees, okay? You don't need to draw this, but it's just helped me to prove uh, so you can see what I'm talking about when I am uh, representing these points. Now, when they say you must find the perimeter, you take those distances, the distance, all right? And when you take the distances, you add them together. It's 2 times the square root of 10 plus 5 times the square root of 2 plus square root of 10. You get about 16.6 .6 unit, and that's how you find it. Now, remember, you have a right angle triangle here. So the base times the height, and this is very important, that you do not use, you use the right um, values, all right? So if you have uh, x 
to z x to z x to z yeah x to z is the square root of 10 if you have uh, uh, x to y it's 2 times the square root of 10 all right so this here is the longer side so this is 90 degrees so when you find the area you have to take half times base times height and i get 10 units squared okay so also worth knowing that square root of 10 times square root of 10 is just 10. 10 times 2 is 20. Half of 20 gives you 10 units squared. Right, so we have got the distances between two points here. Now you see this is point P is k, comma, 0, and then point Q is 0, comma, k. They are seeing the distance is equal to 10. So I punch in my x and I punch in my y, the exchange in x plus the exchange in y. All right, and to get rid of the square root, I must square both sides. So when I square both sides, this is going to become 10 square, and k minus 0 is just k, k square is k square, and 0 minus k is minus k, but negative k squared is positive k square. That gives you 2k square. You divide the 100 by 2 to give you 50, and then you take the square root of 50. Whatever that answer is, you can give a positive answer and a negative answer. I just left my answers in insert form. Right, the third question, again, something similar, but points here. This x is 1. Here the x point is 1 minus p. Here one, uh, y is 2p, and here the y value is 1. All right, so the distance there is equal to the square root of 11 minus 9p. So I took the values. I started with this 1 minus 1 minus p. It needs to be squared. Then 2p minus 1. All right. So the square root equals to the square root. You can drop the square root now because the same thing, taking the square both sides, leave you with that. Now, I bring in a little bit of side work in order for me to find this 2p minus 1. 2p minus 1, if you do it on the side somewhere, it brings you to 4p squared minus 4p plus 1. All right. I, I hate to do everything here at once. Okay. I always trying to do those long things on the other side. And remember, this minus p squared is nothing but positive p squared. All right. So, I then go ahead, write them down, and now I'm going to collect sort of like terms or quadratic equations are always supposed to equal to zero, all right? So I move my terms over. Eventually, I should end with 5p squared plus 5p minus 10. Well, I can see if I divide throughout by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1, and so on. So I get p squared plus p minus 2. This factorizes p minus 1, p plus 1. Then the two numbers I'm looking, p is equal to 1 and p is equal to negative 2. These are the possible values of p. That s values tells you already you should have more than one answer. All right, question 4 in my video. You have got point r, which is 4,7. Point s is negative 3,2. Right, so they are on a coordinate plane. So what they are telling us, they are saying that r t is equal to s t and then they tell you that uh, point t should be some k comma zero because it cuts okay the it cuts the x-axis so when it cuts the x-axis the y value will be zero all right so we also know we are looking for fraction as an answer so if r to t is equal to s to t then you take r to t and you take the exchange in x plus the exchange in y. So I'll take 4 minus my k, and then obviously 7 minus my 0, and then I take the same 4 as negative 3 minus k and 2 minus 0. All right, taking away the square roots, they cancel out because the same thing equals to the same thing. And now I'm bringing in my side work again. So 4 minus k all squared gives me k squared minus 8k plus 16. It's always necessary to do it on the side, okay? And this one here, negative 3 minus k all squared, negative, negative, I get a positive answer eventually. All right? So my answer would be k squared plus 6k plus 9. So I bring them all in, and then I simplify left side, 16 plus 49 is 65. 9 plus 4 is 13. And then everything should go to the left, should equal to 0. So the k squares will cancel, leaving me with 8k minus 6k, which is minus 14k. And if you are solving for k, everything should go to the right. k should be on the left. The fraction for k is 26 over 7. But remember, the y value is 0.